So this week's really the first time that we can get a sense for the shape of these uh, landscapes that we're making. One of the sort of happy accidents about this project is that this form was designed with uh, a series of intersecting planes that kind of came together these sort of harsh angles. And after we built the rigid steel, which has really harsh angles in it, and then added this corrugated steel decking, it started to smooth out. And then we added this board material, which is a cement board called Hardybacker. And as you can see, it really forms these sort of graceful curves that really mimic the shape of natural slopes. So we're excited about the fact that uh, these forms, though on paper look like they were fairly sort of engineered looking, once they're built, just because of the materials we've chosen, they really have this organic sort of graceful look to them. You can see the cement board's been laid down and there's all these penetrations across the slope in sort of an irregular grid and what these are, there's basically two different things going on. There's a fairly regularly spaced grid of penetrations, which are simply uh, plastic tubing with a flange on the top. And through those tubing uh, locations, um, and it's in a grid of 11 by 14, we're gonna have a series of cables and sampler tubes. So these are sensor cables that carry you know, electronic signals data through from a sensor head that'll be buried in the soil to our computer system. And there's also sampler tubes. These are tubes that carry gas that we can pump out from within the soil and tubes that carry water that we can pump out from within the soil. For example, there'll be 496 individual water samplers, 496 individual soil water content sensors, 496 individual soil water potential sensors. And these, along with a lot of other sensors, are all gonna go through these, these penetrations. One thing you might wonder is how we're gonna make this water tight. We've built this nice form and then drilled all these holes in it. After we get the sensor bundles in, um, we're gonna add an expanding foam material and then sort of a pourable urethane sealant. And that should seal around the cables, seal around the uh, sensor or the sampler tubes and create a watertight system. The disadvantage to this is it'll be difficult to actually replace sensors or samplers since it's kind of a sealed system. The other type of penetration we have are these small hexagonal plastic fittings and they're a bit smaller opening and those are for a pressure sensor. They're called a piezometer. What those sensors are is uh, they measure water pressure. So what they measure is the amount of saturated soil above those locations. So the depth of soil that's 100% saturated with water. Once the soil water is saturated with water, it exerts a downward pressure that's measurable using these pressure sensors. And so because we have something like 34 of those in each one of these landscapes, we can use those measurements to make a map of the water table. And that allows us to tell where water is saturated, it also allows us to tell how fast water is moving because the slope of that water table indicates something about the resistance to flow through the soil medium. So now that the cement board has been installed, you can see we've got this, uh, we call it a convergent shape. And what that means is as water is gonna rain onto this landscape, you can imagine we'll have a, a, a meter of soil on it that the shape of the surface of the soil is gonna exactly mimic the shape of the cement board underneath. Water that um, lands on the upper parts or the side parts of the slope is gonna tend to wanna flow through the soil, through the pore spaces of the soil towards this center valley or hollow. And so we know we call it convergent because water will uh, become concentrated as it flows through the soil down into this sort of central axis of the landscapes. As I said, we're gonna have uh, a full meter of soil, and so we'll have sensors at many different depths, up to four different depths in different locations. And that'll allow us to trace a rainstorm as the water first hits the soil. The sensors at five centimeters will see that. Then the sensor is at 25 centimeters, then 50 centimeters, then 85 centimeters. The water percolates down. So as the water moves through the lower parts of the soil, the sensors in the upper part will then start to show that that water is flowing out or evaporating back through the soil. And we'll be able to see really in three dimensions how water is making its way through this relatively complex landscape. And the reason we've chosen this shape is because it really does mimic natural landscapes. In natural landscapes, in areas sort of above a river channel, so if you're walking up a canyon and you're walking through a channel, 
and you keep choosing tributaries and it gets smaller and smaller, eventually you'll get to a place where there's not more channel above you, but there's still a big part of the landscape, which is what we call the hill slope. And that's what we're mimicking here, or this is hill slope. And these tend to be curved and they tend to be somewhat convergent. So water that runs off the surface or runs through the shallow soil converges down into where a river channel would form. And that's the part of the landscape that we're simulating here in these Leo landscapes.